everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today I'm so excited to be showing you how to do this Victorian style angel that is heralding over a beautiful snow scene. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to explain every step of the process. We do have a traceable. Materials are in the description below. You may have to open it up. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. People with wrenches are moderators. If you have questions, you can put them in all caps for the mods to find, and I am ready to teach this painting today. Oh, you're ready to just jump right in. I, I am. I'm like, jump in this paint. This is one I'm very excited to do. Um, it just really spoke to me. I really loved it. Uh, it. It actually is very akin to stuff that I did in my youth. Mm. So I was like, oh, I feel this painting. So hopefully you're feeling it too and you're excited to create it. Let's go over the materials. I've got my little reference here. I'm going to put this aside so I know what I'm doing. Otherwise... You'll get a painting, but you'll get a totally different painting. We should sometime challenge me to to do it without any reference and see how, <laughs> how off script and things that I'll get. Um, I have a 9 by 12 uh, art panel here. This is by Artist Loft. We have wishes on here. The wishes for this particular canvas are all Sherpa and Sherkla directed. Um, one of our uh, very close Sherpettes, Chrissy's, her dog is crossing the Rainbow Bridge, and we wanted to put a wish out there for all pet owners whose animals are transitioning, that their animals have strength, and that they have strength and compassion and love around them. And then we wanted this holiday season compassion for animals all over the world, just a softer, gentler experience for them. And then to the people who get out, whether it be the park service, whether it be animal rescue, whether it be a volunteer squad, but for the people that volunteer, to save animals that are at risk. We want to send a lot of love and extra stuff. If you've been thinking about it, it's a great way to give back to your planet over the holidays. I'm ready to sippy sippy. Well, while you're sippy sippy. Sippy sippy. I'm going to tell, I'm going to answer Emily. She asked a great question. She was like, Hi, Emily. Can we ask specific prop questions about this on the website's project page? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, there's a right at the bottom of it. You can ask a question and even attach a photo of the of what your of, of your project or if you have a question, you can do that right there. So click on the the link there where it says traceable. You'll find the link to the project page right there and you can just ask a question. Yeah, all kinds of questions right there in that page with uploadable things. So, let's go over the colors. They're kind of fun today. Um I have cad yellow medium, cad red light. This is just crazy right here. I have, oh, you're. <laughs> yes. I have titanium white, phthalo blue, diox purple, bird sienna, phthalo green, quinacridone magenta, and a little smidge of Mars black. My secret fun tool that I'm going to be using is my sponge. I'm really going to like this. I've got several of them. And the reason that I have a few is I'm going to want to pull some of my blue down. But I'm going to want to come back with the soft yellow glow, that Harold's glow. And to do that, it's like a two sponge thing. By the way, you could just use square kitchen sponges. It's just about the surface texture and the nature of sponges and how they paint. You're not round biased? I'm not round biased. I mean, I wouldn't use the scrubby side of your kitchen sponge. And once a sponge has become a painting sponge, it's not a cleaning sponge anymore. It is a painting sponge for life then. <laughs> once a painting sponge, always a painting sponge. I don't know why that amuses me so much. So I'm going to take my phthalo blue, a little bit of this right here, and some of my phthalo purple. And I'm going to use a mix of these two colors to really deepen up my blue. So initially I thought about doing a Prussian blue. And if you have Prussian, you can just do that. But this is actually a nice deep color that you can do for a sky to start off a nice sky. And so I'm going to come right here and I'm going to swirl. You can see I'm swirling this sponge. This sponge is slightly damp. If I were to squeeze it, no water would come out of it, but, you know, it's damp enough to move some paint. And here's my little sponging trick when I'm doing these to get a beautiful soft gradated background, is first you push, you can kind of see I'm kind of squeezing and pushing like mid hard, like pressing in a little bit to get stuff off. But then I come back over the surface and I buff gently, like in a soft polishing. And can you see how that softens that blend? Quite a lot. I'm going to come to this side of my sponge that doesn't have uh, particularly any color on it. And I'm going to grab just the blue. And you can see that I can then pretty easily get that blue worked in, can't I? Isn't that crazy how that works? 
Just getting that blue worked in. And then I'm gonna buff. Look at the buffing. It's just a buffing technique. Now I could spend hours and hours and hours uh, with a brush getting this effect. <laughs> I'm gonna get my Miyagi on. But the fact is, is this works pretty well, so why make yourself miserable for no reason? Now I'm gonna put this down a little bit and I'm gonna grab this clean sponge and I'm actually gonna pull some white into here and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna start putting the white smoke that we're seeing kind of come up and you can see this is happening. I flipped the canvas upside down so that I can have a better positioning to the work that I have. That no. way I'm Good. not straining my body. It's important to be aware that the way that you might be sitting or the positioning you might have could be impacting. Now I can kind of turn around and see how, oh, look at how perfectly that did that little smoke effect, didn't it? Oh, really? It, man, that gives you a soft blend super fast. Super fast. And again, I could work for hours. I could use a brush. I could be blending out. I've got lots of blending brushes, lots of goats, lots of But you brush. don't have any foaming this way, do you? I don't have any foaming in my paint. Acrylic paint can do this thing called foaming and that can be a real challenge for new artists. So by doing it this way, we don't have the foaming problem uh, that you might have in some of the other blending techniques. But we will go over those in the future. And I'm gonna rinse my brush, uh, my, my brush, my sponge with the white paint out. I've got a little bowl of water over here and I'm just squeezing the heck out of it. I just wanna get the pigment out. I'm gonna dry this a little bit because I don't want the blue to get into my yellow. So I'm gonna dry it and then we'll take a couple questions and I'll show you how to get the yellow. Little glow afoot. Oh, it's okay. I will say thank uh, thank you guys. I just there's some really heartwarming stuff shared out there. And thank you guys. We really, really appreciate uh, you coming and being part of our community and spending time and um, you know, there's been a lot of comments that have been coming up on how much uh, we've changed your lives, but I assure you, it's not as much as you guys have sh have changed and shaped our lives. So we we couldn't be happier or more grateful that we get the opportunity to be here teaching you guys to paint. So thank you, thank you so much. A couple of you guys are enjoying this crazy sponge technique, unless you have a, a thing with getting your hands dirty. But uh, dirty tip, hands. No, I mean that's like a that's a whole thing. If you have a thing about getting your hands dirty, well. tons of people have this feeling. Um, what you do is you just put on rubber gloves and then you won't have the experience, but you can still do the technique. But what if you have a blue glove phobia? Get a pink glove. See, you got to do purple gloves. <laughs> I saw purple gloves in, in one ER. Acknowledge where you're at <laughs> and then be adaptive to be responsive to it. You don't have, you just like where you're at is where you're at and that's totally fine. But there's usually a solution to whatever challenge that you're facing. Um, do we have any questions? Yeah. Now, uh, Jennifer was asking, can we varnish cardstock? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when working on your surface, this is a canvas board, right? Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, it's a pressed particle surface that's a board that has a texture placed over it and a gesso put on it. Okay. Um, it's not like a fine, like a fine art surface. <laughs> which would be like a mason board. Um, you, you'll see an amazing board in companies like Ampersand. Um, there's a ton of artist board options out there, many of whom are actually covered with canvas or linen, actually. But this is not that, and it's very economical and comes in a pack. Yep, yep. So we paint a lot around here, so sometimes I like to demo those products so that you can see them, but I also like to dem demo the Ampersands so you guys can see the differences in those products and effects mm -hmm. and then I, I pay for it and then you don't have to go out and experiment with your money and sometimes sometimes we will we get we'll, we'll get donations sometimes yes we, we do we get donations sometimes we'll, companies will send us stuff and we're like we'll try it out and if we like it we'll show you and we use it all up we use yeah, everything we use it all up if you don't like it you'll never see it <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of how it goes <laughs> so all right let's you want to put the warm yellow glow in Okay. So there's this little sliver of a nice little yellow glow that's kind of happening down here, and I want to get that in. I may move some of my little cloud effect up if I need to, but let's get in some of our yellow. And so first we'll go right on into our little white. My sponge is damp. I can, you know, kind of come here and make sure that I've got a little bit of this happening here. And I'm going over and I'm just 
making sure, even though I've got an angel coming up, that I've got this space. Now right here, I am putting out a little bit more of my, my white, like you do. And I can come in and get some of this yellow and a little white and a little yellow. And we're gonna come right here and we're gonna just give ourselves a glow. There a little glow, our Harold's glow. And one of the things you're gonna see me do is I move my sponge up and I kind of move my sponge down. And the reason for that is, is it does help me get a natural effect to my canvas so that it doesn't look so man-made, even though it's totally man-made. Another fun thing I can do is I can grab a little of my magenta right here in the corner of my sponge. Can you see how that's loaded? And I can come here and I'm be like, hey, let's put a little morning pink glow right here. Isn't that nice? We can be very playful with it if we feel like it. I like a little morning pink glow to peek behind my little trees. So wherever we think that would be nice, and if you feel like you need more yellow, you can just come back with that, right? Look at that. And even layer in front, which is quite dramatic. So this is a very dramatic way in acrylic to get like a really big result on your sky. You can be like, ooh, I love it. So I think we've got that up pretty well. And then I think it'll be fun to sort of paint the landscape, paint a lot of it in and then put our angel in. Now I have a traceable and if at this stage you're not going to, um, I'm going to hand paint it in and I'll show you guys how I do that. But if you're not going to do that, let me show you what you've got here. You would dry your painting at this stage, right? So you know where things are. And you would take, not this, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> your printout from your computer, from the PDF on our website. This is the, this is, this is the original tra <laughs> traceable that makes your trans, your image. You would lay this onto your canvas where you want it. And underneath you have a product called Serral Paper. I like the yellow. I think it blends very nicely into the acrylic paint. This is for artists work. So this is for paintings. Some of the graphite papers or transfer papers have oil in them and they don't work. So. The brands down there, I don't care that you get this brand. It's just there in the link so you can find it. You could use another brand that you like. Uh, Martha does a good one too. She's just very, very proud of it. So I would tape that down thoroughly and then trace over all the lines and it would transfer the image onto my canvas. But in yes. this particular case, I'm going to just free hand it in. So I want you guys to see how it's constructed. If that's cool. It's your show. You can do I you like can do as you want to. how we build these things on occasion. Let's get uh no, that's a oil brush. It's gonna get mushy. Mushy. I need a Cambridge. So what this is the reason I'm I could probably get away with this. Deciding not to go with this is this is pure bristles and so we'll get quite soft when it gets wet. Whereas this, there it is, is a mixture of bristles and filaments, and so therefore it's more resilient to painting in acrylic. I'm going to dip it in water and drag off the extra drops so that we just have a little bit in there. And I'm going to go ahead and load up some of it onto my brush. You can grab a little of that kind of blue and purple mix that you made. So you're making it kind of off white and we're going to come here. We're going to make a little bit of a valley with the snow. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. And we're just going dry over this, brushing this in so we can start to get a sense that, oh, we got some snow. Do you have some snow? I have some snow. Let's get some of our thalo in there. And we're going to soften this whole space up so much. So soft. Let's soften it up. Look how soft that is. All nice and soft. I'm going to come back with some dark colors, but this really lets me do that. I can even get a little bit of my yellow in there if my brush is not too blue. And I can put in some of this yellow glow that we have right here in the landscape. And I'm wiggling my brush back and forth. You can see it's just on the tip of the bristles. I'm just stroking back and forth. You guys are doing great. If it's a very new technique to you, be easy with yourself. Don't get frustrated with how you're doing. Right, you don't want to do that. I'll rinse this off. 
You can see I've got some pigment still in it, so I'm going to keep rinsing it a little bit. And then I can even come here and, with the brush just being damp, soften or subtract a little bit of paint if I need to. Interesting how you can do that. Now, for everyone who's asking, <laughs> the, the paper that you are using for tracing there, serial paper, mm -hmm. there's a link in the description down below. In the description down below. In fact, all my videos I have, if you open it up, there's about 50,000 characters down there. And there's a list of other things you might like in your art studio, books you might really want to read, tools you might really want to have, several papers included in that. Um, and I think uh, I have the yellow listed. But what you, what you want is you want to have some white in your studio and some yellow in your studio. And if you really, really can't afford that, which is totally normal, um, it's not particularly pricey, but we all have budgets, right? And this is a rough time of year. Um, you can also rub kids chalk on the back of the paper to kind of make a uh, at-home DIY transfer paper. So those are, I have a bunch of uh, videos about how to trace images on, but that's the basic principle of that. Isn't that looking nice down there and a nice glow? Do we have a nice glow? I think we do. So I'm going to take a little bit of my green and some of my black, interestingly enough. And I'll come here and I'm going to just first start out this hill with this very dark, aggressive color. See how dark and aggressive that color is? I'll bring that back. And it's just I'm wiggling this brush back and forth. This is a very deep sense of an underpainting that I've got going on. And I'm just doing the green right here. As I move forward, I might get more into this blue, which you can see me doing. See that blue? Wiggling again. Coming along underneath here. The wonderful part of all of this. And then you can dry brush even into the snow. Look how we're dry brushing into the snow. That means I don't have a lot of water in my brush. And so as I carry that forward into the snow, it will uh, be really, really light. Now I can get some of my white onto this. I haven't added any water, I haven't rinsed. And you can go ahead and softly put a little bit of like right here in the middle. Look, I'm just back and forth making a little bit of snow. See how the little snow goes out? A little bit of snow. A little bit of snow here and there to make sure that this part of the world is part of this whole snowy landscape. So now we're getting this. You can see that landscape starting to like cool up and become part of what's happening there. I'm going to get a little bit of my blue on here and a little bit of white. And I'm going to go ahead and very softly, this is like kind of like, and I sometimes I'll come on the corners and that's how I make bushes. See, I'm making a soft little edge here with some little bushes in the distance. Maybe a little softness here to just imply that there's some things before I tree it up. Now you guys might go, oh boy, it's fan time, but actually I don't think we're going to use the fan. We're going to actually use probably my cat's tongue, uh, my number four, or a filbert. So um, you could use either the cat's tongue or a filbert. I'm going to use a number four. I'm going to get this right here wet, and I'm going to mix a little bit of this burnt sienna into my green. And you might even put a little black in it. You're making a very deep, cold forest green. And so that's how I get my phthalo under control. And I'm going to come up right up into this space, I think. And I'm going to just tap this brush up and down. And then I'm going to come right here and tap up a little bit of a leaf. Well, let's tap up another little bit of a leaf. I love this type of pine experience where we're just building this little pine out. See how we're doing? And the roundness of this brush is going to work in my benefit. Now, this is a filbert, not a bright. Yeah, it's a filbert, not a bright. You could work the corner of a bright. You could use a round. Whatever brush you feel like you've got some good results out of is what you're going to do. I'm, I'm making the top kind of like... You know how they get all like, whoa, I'm just... Expressive. Expressive, yeah. You want, you want your trees to be a little bit expressive. You know, and they're all the way down to like right here. So we're, we've got to put snow on it. We'll put some brighter space on it, but 
right now, I'm just pulling these little strokes. The little branches come out. You don't want to make little stair steps and you don't want to, something that sometimes we want to do when we're doing trees is to do a kind of version of this, right? Or we do that. And that's not what we're trying to do because if you see, you could climb it like a ladder. So if I kind of mess between it very quickly, it starts to take on the feeling of a tree, doesn't it? But it's in that messy space where branches are not always the same length. And yes, they are narrower at the top and get wider at the bottom. That's a that's a thing pines can do. They sometimes they're like bald on one side though. So you've got to realize that trees do some crazy stuff. And your left brain is going to want to give you a tree that's like the symbol of a tree. And you want to make a tree that's like, oh, that's a tree. So if you made either one of those, that's how you correct it. <laughs> I'm going to get a little water in my brush. I'm going to dip the tip in. I'm going to load back up. How are we doing? Good. At the end of the trees, we'll take some questions. I'll bring this here. And so, you know, yeah, we're going to come back with white and some brighter, softer colors, but we have to get these deep values in to really create that space. I need to make a little tree buddy next to it. It's a little tree buddy. Maybe. Oh! Now I don't know what I'm doing. What am I going to do? I guess I'll have to just imagine it until I pick it up. Reference down. No, no, it's okay. I don't need it. I'll get it in a second. Yeah, it's, it's not really important at this stage. I know I've got a smaller little tree over here. And any way that he changes, it'll just be like, oh, look. Now, Carrie was one was curious. Could she use your her her fan brush technique on these trees? Yes, you could. You absolutely could. If you're familiar with the fan brush technique, if you're super into the fan brush technique and know it really well, and that's how you get your happiest little happy tree, by all means, use it. This is just another way to build up some Cheeky little pines. They're always cheeky. You gotta recognize that trees are cheeky. There we go. How are those looking? Pineish. Thank you, honey. Let's try again. The issue with low tack tape. Is it a low tack? Is that it's low tack? That's right. It's not too tacky. It's low tacky. <laughs> Let's do that right here. Press, 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 press. I'm working it. <laughs> You're burnishing the edge down as I'm... <laughs> burnishing as, as you can. I'm getting a little bit of that blue that I mixed up in the sky and I'm putting into my white. Right, with the purple. I'm making a pretty light color. I'm going to just come above some of the tree. Not all the tree. Some of the tree needs to have some snow in it. Right. Let's put a little snow as if things are peaking. And it's okay that some of these colors even kind of work with each other because we're just trying to talk a little bit about the snow that's in the tree. Your snowy tree. In case you didn't know the tree. The tree's like, wait, I thought it was spring. It's not. It's winter. Oh no. I'm sure the tree's actually very happy to be in winter. So I'm leaving a lot of the green to peek through in my snow, and that's going to help it when we back up really look like it's a tree in snow. Do that here. Now, you can always put snow on top of branches. You can even come here and be like, hey, bank. Look at that bank of snow coming up. I love painting the little snows. Put here. So you just give it a little bit of thought. So lots of openings, right? I always pop one out very specifically on a on a little branch. And if you want to put back any like green, you can always do that. You can always rinse out your brush. Get your green and your brown and a little bit of your black again, if you need to. And come back and be like, no, no, there's a little bit here. Okay, so we're never like stuck. So 
If it takes a minute for you to find your tree on that hill, that's totally okay. You're just trying to sit there and have a chance to talk about that tree on your hill. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of my white because I wanna exaggerate some of the snow. Down here. See how we're exaggerating some of the snow? Yeah. There we go. All right, can't wait to put the angel on. It's gonna be so fun. <sighs> All right, questions. Oh, let's see oh, here. Coffee microwaving from my most beautiful assistant. So amazing. Now, the uh, you've been you've been using that uh, filbert for quite a lot of this, haven't you? Well, I use the filbert for all of the tree and some of the snow, and then I use so so far brush wise we have this and this. We have a palette knife we use to mix our purples, and we had sponges. I have a clean one here, and we use these sponges to blend this background and create this effect. Now, where did those sponges come from, and what kind are they? So these are just cellulose sponges. The round ones you get in these craft packages of sponges, they uh, sell them even at the dollar store. Um, I've seen them at Tuesday morning. They're definitely in all the big craft stores and art stores. You can also get them online, and there is a link in the description below to the exact craft uh, package. But don't, sometimes they raise the money on these things on Amazon, so uh, it shouldn't be more than... A few dollars, like six, should be the maximum you ever spend on a bag of assorted crab sponges. If it gets crazy, don't buy it. Hmm. I got this mug from Patty. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Your your Sherpa coffee cup. I have to say thank you, Miss Patty. Thank you, Miss Patty. I'm drinking out of my coffee cup. So the um, let's see here. There was another question up here mm. that I had just misworded to go to. Do, do, do. Uh, if you now, if you can't get the the brushes that you have linked in the description, what do you suggest they look for in brushes? Um, and I have videos on this, and I suggest highly that you watch them. And there's also a Technique Tuesday uh, playlist on Facebook that's unique to Facebook that's about getting back to those techniques. So watch all that. But on a brief overhead, uh, I like synthetic in general. Uh, not always, over uh, natural bristles. You want something firmer. You want the ferrule to be seated and well attached. Um, you want a company that's been in business for a minute that you could contact if there was an issue with your brush because often they're handmade. Um, there's a few that are factory made now, but often they're handmade, so there could be a lot of variants. So those are the things, and, you're, and, you're, and you don't want a watercolor brush. You don't want a brush that's you know just for oils. You want something that is hardy enough for acrylic that's got a firm, firm aspect and I tend to like brights over flats but I do try to keep filberts and some other shapes in. My yes. Now it was winter two seconds ago, I swear it was. No. And it, it, it isn't right now. I'm not having a flash. It's just really hot outside today. There's there's a great Texas. question that came up and I, I, I answered it before I thought mm. about it. But they were asking can they use these images for their Christmas cards? And I said, for personal use only, just don't sell them. Yeah. And and, you just send them to your friends and family. Yeah. yeah. Don't so, open up an Etsy store. Yeah, you need a go, license for that. Yeah. Don't, don't, go, <laughs> don't go like reproducing and selling cards and stuff. But, you know, for your own use and for sending for your own family members, I mean, you know, sure. And if you want to burden, you know, your friendly business people, uh, you know, that's fine too. Just don't sell the cards. Don't do that kind of stuff, you know. You know, you know, if you, if you, I tell you what, if you're going, should I be doing this? Probably the answer is no. Can you tell he's a dad? Yeah. That's literally something he said three times this morning. If you're saying, asking, should I be doing this? The answer is no. <laughs> the kids don't love it. It's not their favorite. But you get the point. And mm -hmm. that's with anybody. And that's kind of the copyright rule in general. Is if, if you're questioning that, the chances are you should err on the owner's rights. So. It's helpful if you can to err on the owner's rights. I'm going to probably stay in my filbert for a minute. So right about here, I don't know if I have, um, but right here in this area, because the angel's going to come down here and her robes are going to flow back this way. So we need, I'll just do it with my water. I don't know if you know you can do this, but you can sketch with water on your canvas. Now, that And I do, I don't know if you can see it. But oftentimes I'll be like, is this in a good spot? And I'll look at it wet and then I'm like, oh, yeah, that is because that's it changes. This only works if you're using a good paint and your paint is thoroughly dry. Uh, I was going to say that's a pro paint. That's a pro paint feature. I know. Sometimes I'll show you guys some pro paint features and I know sometimes that's not fair. 
I'm going to get a smidge, a smidge, just a smidge of my cad red light into my yellow. And what it is, is I'm trying to warm the yellow without making it orange. I'll get a little bit of white. You can see it's all sort of blended up. And I'm going to just very softly, gently, you can see it's just a soft little stroke, kind of come around here and brush out the halo. Isn't that a nice halo? Love halos. The glow. Yay. Just bringing that around. Sometimes it can be hard to get those circular strokes. So if you're feeling frustrated, don't feel alone. Don't feel alone. I'm going to get a little more white as I go in. As you can see, as, as you go in on her, she gets it gets a little bit brighter. We're just trying to show this sort of halo and I'll come around. I like to go on the edge of my brush. It makes a nice line, as you can see. Oh, so lovely. Rinse out. You can come back and get a little bit of your red back into your orange. I mean yellow and you're going to get kind of a bright yellow orange, just a little bit brighter and you can come in here and add some fire to that divine glow. Never, never drive faster than your angel can fly. <laughs> Which if you see me going 55 on the freeway, that's why. <laughs> 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 All right, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? So there we go. We kind of have that centered in. I know that I've got a lot of little dots of paint that I'm gonna be doing. Let me see how I can demo this uh, easily for you guys. Maybe if I grab a corner of my palette paper, something firm to put it on. There we go. So another thing that we can do while we're here this is fluid paint. You could thin your acrylic paint till it's this consistency. Craft paint, by the way, is also fluid paint. So it's not like you've got to go out and get uh, particularly super expensive things. I'm going to take it and I'm going to dot a couple of these beautiful little stars. Now I have a splatter tool and if you want to use your splatter tool, this is a great place to use it. But the retro effect is the dots. So if we're trying to talk about, you know, vintage art, there wasn't a lot of splattering techniques. So sometimes our techniques will uh, make the painting seem older. We were actually watching a whole thing on about verifying Jackson Pollock painting. And one of the things Pollock painting is that it, you know, might have a technique that you wouldn't have seen in that time or product. So when we're mimicking something that's maybe more classic, you know, if we we're doing something Edwardian, we're doing something older. You can still be playful and make things your own. You know, recognize that some of the things about it are what make it seem really, really like it is. Now, while I've got this here, I can take a detail brush I can take a detail brush and I'm going to get a little of my yellow onto it, downloading it with my yellow. And then I can come here and add some white to it. And right here, I'll just come around with a little bit of a yellow around that. And I can just twinkle this star. You can twinkle as many stars as you want. In this particular case, I'm just going to twinkle one. You could twinkle a bunch of them though. Feel free. I don't want to limit your right to twinkle. But you want to make these radials around the star. Now this is a number one monogram liner. Any one or two small detail brush should be able to give you a good result in your twinkling. Uh-oh. I boo-booed. My boo -boos. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to test and see if a damp clean brush will get the boo-boo to go away, which it does. 
always check to see if your brush will will repair the boo-boo. You can always just come through and see. Twinkle a few of your stars. I think some of these I'm twinkling will be covered. But it's just that little twinkle, twinkle, little star. All right, we've twinkled some stars. Now we got some retro twinkles going. Oh darn it, I see a spot that needs a retro twinkle. So that's the thing. Once you start twinkling, very tough to stop it. You cannot disengage the twinkle mechanisms. Right. And the other thing you've got to realize is that some twinkles need to be bigger and some twinkles need to be smaller. It's Do not uniformly thing. twinkle. Don't uniformly twinkle. So Miss that's my little strategy twinkle. for getting those little stars in and keeping it looking very vintage, very retro. Miss my thing. So before I start putting her in, do we have any questions before we be? Oh, it's looking really good. It's like right now, really, it's just kind really of a nice good. little painting. Could be an alien orb coming to get you. Yeah. So I can I can just uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, just recapping some of the the questions. So since we talked about the uh, the use of of the painting images, there was just some clarification on that. And uh, to give you an update, they were asking their they're allowed to paint our paintings and use them for personal use. Yes. But they can't paint it and then sell those cards. Right. So, you know, in, in personal use, and there's a whole description about how we're okay with it being used in the description below. Plus, we have a licensing program that you can uh, write. So, personal use means the way we expect you to use it. So, you actually can sell an individual piece that you hand paint. And if you sell it to your friends and family, we're cool. Um, if you take it to a public setting, um, a craft fair, an art gallery, online on Etsy, on eBay, and you're selling it to the public, and again, this is not reproductions, no mechanical, mechanical reproductions, that's prints, any way that you would run off several, you put a bunch of them on shower curtains or skateboard decks, we see people take them and do on Amazon all the time. Um, you can sell the artwork. In, in that manner. Um, if you want to put it in a commercial sense, you want to make reproductions, you want to teach it a sip and paint, you want to um, do anything that commercializes the work, then you've got to contact our licensing department. Good news is we're reasonable and we're cheap, so there should be no reason to not contact us. John just went running off like lickety split, so I have no idea where he went. So hopefully that is a good answer to that question, or I've just opened a can of worm of 55 follow-up questions. No, no, I think that that was, uh, there was some, some concern of worm opening already, and I think you just... Uh, did, I, uh, did I close the worm? I, th I think you, you, you summarized it for everyone. I summarized it for everybody. I closed the worm. <laughs> closed the worms. So we're All doing right. pretty good here. This is like, we're 40, like 38 minutes, I guess, into this. Yeah, and, and we're nearly done. Interestingly really enough, done. the angel's going to be really kind of fun and easy and loose to paint. All right. So I'm taking a number two filbert from my um, personal line of brushes. And I'm going to, in this particular case, just get white. I'm going to come here, make sure this is dry. And I'm going to put on my glasses, my vision enhancers, because other, whoa, my vision is so enhanced, I can't see out of it. Wait, just a second, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does anyone splatter to such a degree that they can't see out of their glasses later? Because apparently I do that a lot. Mm. I'll like go to put well, my glasses on. I'm like, oh, I can't see out of these anymore. Everything in your... Uh, in my life. Everything around here is... My children are splattered. Splattered. <laughs> That's where my freckles came from. It was paint splattered. <laughs> Just can I go splattered with that? everywhere. Can I, can I? Can I? What? I don't know. Can I go with freckles came from paint splatters? Yeah, I think that's, re that's totally reasonable. Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. Clean glasses. I can see... Not I obscured. can't tell you how often that has messed me up. <laughs> so this is a small brush. I'm just suggesting that you use a small brush that you have some control over. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to put in the basic little shape of her small face. It's, it's not big. And so if you think of the human face, initially what you're really talking about is kind of like a little egg shape. Right? You kind of are familiar with the egg shape. But at the three-quarter... They kind of come in for an eye and comes out for cheek. Oh. Okay. See how I made that little shape there? I do. Little little face shape. Little, little face shape. Jennifer said that uh, 
freckles or angel kisses. Oh, well, angels love the heck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you're our favorite. I'm going to bring a little neck down here. I know I'm going to have hair, and I'm going to go ahead and add a little ear that could be peeking up, you know, up into there. Just making sure I have room for features and things. Pulling that little neck out. And again, you have a traceable. So you can just put this on right now, trace over all these lines, and have her perfectly. Have her perfectly. You could. You could. You don't have to. And I'm going to sketch a little bit with this white paint so I can get a sense of scale. So I'm going to swoop a shoulder forward down where I could start wrinkling the fabric for the hands. And then we're going to say that it comes here a little bit. And there's these little, there's these wonderful wisps that are going to come back. So that's really fun for me. And then up here, I swing up. Swing that wing up and then bend it back. That line is going to tell me where to put them in with my filbert. And then I'm going to have another little wing that's going to sweep up kind of parallel but lower and come more here. And then we could say that there's underneath the wing. And then the robes are going to flow off the back. And you'll see me do a lot of these sort of lyrical strokes because we're going to be talking about this beautiful flow of the robe. But right now, I just need to know what space is taken up by what where. And here's an interesting thing. I've got my little orange paint, right? I'm going to throw a doohickey in the mix. I'm going to add a little bit of my quinacridone. I like a flesh tone with a little bit of quinacridone in it. And I'm going to say, oh, look, I've got a little bit of a hand there. Dip in the water if you're having any trouble getting the flow out. I like to build a paddle when I'm making hands. It just lets me know what's going on with it so that I can get the basic shapes that are happening. You can kind of see the hand is really just this beautiful little curve. And we'll put it all in with its detail in a second. And then I'm going to dry this so I can make a nice trumpet. Because you need a straight line for a trumpet. It's a, it's a thing. Okay. So while she's drying that, I'll say, don't forget to use your uh, air mover on that lowest heat setting. That way it doesn't um, cause any like uh, unwanted shrinkage or crackage or color distortion color distortions i'm going to come up kind of the top of the hand and i'll go ahead and get a little bit of my yellow and brown together and i'm going to make a very very thin line using my paper actually helped me keep that line pretty thin i'll come down pretty far about two inches past the hand And I'm going to open up. Oh, wow. The trumpet space. Yeah. I know. It's a little hack there. Totally trumpeted up. It just trumpets out of the blue. You got to get yeah, all right, survival skills together sometimes. <laughs> so things you learn. Uh, paper towels do that trick, too. If you forgot your T-square, which I do a lot, which is why I have a lot of other ways to get a straight line. Because, of course, I constantly forget my T-square. Now, I'm going to get this in the water. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of black. This is going to help us in this because the original vintage card was done in watercolor. But... Uh, We're going to use some little tricks that we have as acrylic artists to make it work for our style paint. So nothing like a little contrast to help a thing pop. And go ahead and get a little yellow and a lot of white and make a highlight. Okay. 
right down the horn. There you go. So how's our horn? Oh, look, we've got a nice little horn. It's a trumpeting. Now, right here, I'm going to go ahead. They have kind of a brown orange. I'm going to take a little bit of my quinacridone and my brown together. And is a lot of white. I guess I think I will blush this space instead of brown it. Now see how I'm doing there? I'm gonna get some water on there. And a little more white. Make sure that that's softly shaded. Always come back with a little white highlight, but it's nice to have the pink in there. I'm going to go ahead and add that pink to the edge of my fingers here that are at her hand. I'm going to get a little bit of my white, come along the chin. Front. And I'm going to get that little tiny crazy uh, brush that I did my detailing in. And I'm going to use my spray bottle this time. And this is going to help me get just this out, just the brown out. And I might pick up a smidge of the black just to darken this. I haven't thinned it so much it won't bind. But I've thinned it enough to improve how it's going to come out. Now, in the head, right, halfway between the top of the head and the chin, that's eyes. That's where we always set our little eyes. And then halfway between the eyes and the chin is where we set our nose. And then halfway between the chin and the nose and the chin is where we set our mouth. So if you're aware of that, you can start to put in sweet little features like what she has here. I am just tapping in these little lashes. Now she's got a nice little arched eyebrow coming up. It should have a friend or a sister. A little shadow under her nose. You can say, oh, yeah, those lids are right there. And the top of the nose here. Isn't it amazing how that just comes in? Yeah. Trips me out every time. Little like, eyes. It just comes right together. Come under the ear. Come under the chin. Go ahead and just go with the pink. I think it's going to make a cuter lip. So right under this nose, I'm going to put a little curve up. This little bud. So this is like a rosebud mouth. I'll go ahead and add a little bit of pink to the eyes. Let's get a little of that skin color that we had earlier, just so we can soften this little thing on the chin here. You don't want to take it away. You need that highlight, but we just want to soften it. And playing with faces is often about just balancing these things out. Now I'm going to get a little bit of my white. And we may actually, if you want to, get a little bit of the fluid white, because sometimes the fluid white will work for us when... The heavy body doesn't want to play. And again, remember, craft paint is an option. I'm going to come here at the nose and make a little highlight on top of the nose. A little bit at the, at the little brows here. 
that's all we really need on that face. I'm going to get my brown and I'll just come underneath the hand here. And just paint the little tucked fingers, right? That are playing the trumpet. There you go. Little tucked fingers. The hair is going to be the funnest part. And listen, don't get frustrated with yourself. It's small, fiddly work. That's why I like to include the traceable. Small, fiddly work. Let's get this wing in. And let's use our filbert to do it, or you could use your cat's tongue. So I'm going to come here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some white. It's okay if there's a little blue in it. See how it's sort of loaded on here? And at first, I'm going to just make that little stroke. I'm just making these little strokes coming down the wing. I am making sure that my wing, and we're gonna, we can brush it straight in once we get those first feathers in. So we can brush that in. To bring that back. Because of how we do our hair, you know, it's nice to get this wing in a little bit first. Now, once that little wing is in, I can go ahead and get a little bit of extra blue so that when I'm coming here, I've got this defined. Okay. Back into my white. Sorry. This is a number four filbert. It's a, yeah, it's number four. I was just asking, what size is that? Number four filbert. And you can see it just makes that little rounded stroke easy for me. My cat's tongue will do that for you too. Now, Deb was asking, has anyone else ever used Sharpies for tiny details? Yes. Um, the issue with Sharpies is that they are, uh, even though they're rated light fast, they're not light fast in the way that we mean art. And they can change color. What I would suggest using is a Posca paint pen, which works really well. Mm, now, that Posca paint pen is actually an acrylic paint. Pen, yeah. Or so. you can, um, you know, get from, you can see how I like pull these feathers in, pull the feather in, pull that feather in, pull it in. See how the brush stroke makes the feather? Yeah. And then I'll just smooth it into this part of the wing because we're going to come back with the orange to define it. But those little white feathers help me get it defined in the first place. Um, yeah, it's an acrylic paint pen, but you can, you can also fill. There's, um, Making sure I've got this clean. There's a ton of methods of laying down paint in a yeah, pen in a like very thin line. Uh, fine liners with acrylic ink are amazing. Um, there's there's a lot of strategies that as artists we can employ about getting that done. But the thing, to, oh, she's looking so pretty. The thing to remember is is that you want a strategy that you're comfortable in. Mm -hmm. So I would never say, oh, never use a sharpie. Just be aware that over time the sharpie can feign or change color. Yep. And I mean, over time, like in five years, six years, is, is kind of what I'm referring to. All right. I'm going to put out a little more white just so that I have it. Just so I has it. And we're going to start kind of getting her little robe in. So first, I'm going to get a little bit of the blue and purple mix on here. And I'm going to get some just white. And going to stroke. And you can see by the direction of the stroke that I'm kind of implying the robe. And here I'm going to definitely start to imply this beautiful angelic presence. And it's very dry brush. Can you see how dry brush this is? So we're getting this effect, but we're doing it by letting the brush skip over the paint. You can see a bunch of the canvas that's maybe showing through. And your, we're using the... Your favorite Scotswoman says that this is a beautiful painting. Is that Tanya? She's, she's here. 
I mean, not that if you were also in Scotland that I don't like you too. It's just Tanya is amazing. She's, and and she's, I know her. She's your she's your bestie. You guys virtual tea and chat all the time. Yeah, I really do. Oh, so much. So I am just brushing this off, just like letting that be open and letting some of the blue show through. So if we can talk about how her robes are ephemeral and loose. You don't want to get too regimented and orderly, you know, maybe with those folds. But it can be hard if you tend to be tidy in your painting. One, there's nothing wrong with that. Then just, you know, kind of slow down and tidily create beautiful flows and folds. It will still work. So don't be like, oh, I have to be expressive to do it. You don't. You've just got to find your process into that expression. That's all you've got to do, if that makes sense. So I'm going to get a little of my dark blue here, and I'm going to come and come along the back. And right here in the folds, I'm using just the edge of the brush to help show that those are little folds. I'm going to get a little more white on here. I'm just going to make sure that I've got, I'm blending that a little bit. It's just, you know, we want to make sure that we keep some of the going. You can always come back and come back in with some blue. See how I'm doing? So you can come back, like, if you feel like you lost anything. It's just too fun to do. Anything that you think you might have lost. I misunderstood Yeti's question. Huh. Could you review the paints that you got out so we know what little messy piles of color you have organized there? Cad yellow, cad red light, titanium white, phthalo blue, docks purple, quinacridone magenta, Mars black, burnt sienna, uh, phthalo uh, green, more titanium white. And this right here is a mix of the yellow, blue, and the dark's purple. Ah, that helps us out quite a lot. I figured it might. So now I'm going to come back with just a little bit of this nice pure white right here, like at our shoulder. Like we're going to do that right there. See that? Ooh, While quicks. my dog guards us from cats everywhere. And just so you know, the studio is completely safe from UPS cats. delivery people. Well, no, the... <laughs> the Amazon people occasionally will set off a Twix. Well, they're friends of cats, according to Twix. <laughs> Cat emissaries. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's where the cats come from, in the big delivery trucks. <laughs> I watch cat videos. Twix is like, what? <laughs> so betrayed. <laughs> oh. I'll see. More cat emissaries. So let's see how we're looking on our little... Oh, isn't that just flowing away beautifully? Now, her wings are a lot of fun. Um, We're going to come and we're going to take just a little bit of our cat red and... Take it into our yellow, and it's kind of like an orange, but we want it to be like more to the yellow. So see how it's quite bright? So now I'm going to come right here. Well, if you have any ears left. Boy, I will, I will have to go check on the Twix in a moment. She'll be fine. She's just having that kind of feel there. Right. Defend the front door. <laughs> Defend, look at those wings. Aren't those nice? You can come here and be like, oh, these little wings. Just like, it's a problem and no one in my family listens to me. <laughs> I keep petting them. I've seen the pets happen. <laughs> yeah, she's very like, don't pet the cats. I'm going to grab a little bit of, oh, now i got to rinse it out a lot more. Even into some clean water. I don't want any. So orange and blue are compliments. So if you get any um, of that into your paint, it will definitely mess with you. So I'm going to just make sure that this is here. I'm going to pull some of these feathers. They're here. Make sure I add some layers of that. So you should have two lovely little wings. And I'm going to get a have more of the butterfly. That's right. 
uh, my mic was off there, so four wings would be a butterfly angel. And I'm just kind of using the blue line to help define okay, how we're doing. That is. So that kind of helps pick and define those wings. Now, yep. her hair kind of flows a little bit between them and in front, so I'm going to want to dry this because I don't want to pick up any of the blue into her hair. So while she's doing that, I'm going to say, yep, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up some links because I know that everyone was it was asking about different hair color. So if you go out to our website and click on video, then you get a little search tab up there. And if you type in hair, you come up with a whole bunch of links. And like I think it's the third or fourth down. It's learn to paint different hair uh, hairstyles and colors in acrylic. And then there was a or guy tang hair. So there's a whole bunch of really great videos out there on how to do different colored hair, different styled hair. So definitely go check that out. I've got a lot of it covered. Yep. There's whole videos just about hair. Yeah, I was just Daenerys giving them a hair, to no rainbow. Down. Yeah, every hair. He's like probably just telling there's so much hair. Have you seen all the hair? All right, I'm going to get my filbert out again, my number two filbert. And I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my cad red and my yellow. Which are really basically is just making a very bright orange. I'll take it more to the orange this time. And I'll put my glasses back on. So I have visions. Hopefully getting up up close on the face, you can kind of see how we put that in. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm as, I'm as close as these old robot eyes can get. <laughs> My okay. new robot eyes are better. Gonna pull. I want to pull some between the wings. And I could have painted her hair in, but some of the hair goes in front of the wing. So I thought it would be fun to uh, just mix it up. Pay attention to your brush direction. It will help. Some more orange here. I'm going to make sure that there's some hair coming around the front. <gasps> so, Re uh, Re Rita, uh, Rita, I think it's R E T A, Rita. Uh -huh. Rita's saying that uh, Twix set off uh, Zeus's alarm, so now Zeus is barking. <laughs> if your furry pet is barking at home, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a little you know, of our uh, brown into that mix. Now you're using a tiny filbert, huh? I am. I'm just using a tiny brush here because if I use anything bigger. Just trying to create a dark little layer there that's the undershadow of the hair. And then I'm going to come into the yellow and maybe even grab a little white. And we're going to just fold out. Some highlights. <laughs> Again, sorry. <laughs> A vigilant time of year for dogs. <laughs> it is the delivery times. They just, they get it, don't they? I just believe if we talked to her, it would really come back to cats, though. <laughs> Probably. She would have some belief about that and cats. So I'm just making sure of a very light yellow. So hopefully we really feel like. All right. I think we've got some nice hair now. We're ready for a signature. Oh my, we're really, that was, that was like so much faster than I expected. Wasn't that just, that was like a quick little painting, wasn't it? It was. And it's amazing how you can visit designs um, and, you know, take an old idea and make it new or take an old style and revisit it as a new style. So if you loved Edwardian or you love Victorian and you want to go back and visit that, um, if you have a collection of ephemera, yeah, you can actually paint those in acrylic. 
There we go. It's actually signed. Actually signed? I'm pretty pleased with this. I'm really pleased with it. It turned out great. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.